Hello viewers, this is Dr. Rahil. I have uh, come here once again on Dental Rich platform to introduce you to one of the leading uh, endodontists in Bangalore and my uh, mentors whom I have lived with and I have practiced uh, dentistry along with him and uh, I am very much uh, overwhelmed to introduce to you Dr. B. Sunil Rock. Good morning Dr. Rahil, it's always a pleasure having you here. Welcome you sir for the show. Sir, along with uh, his wife who is specialist in cosmetic dentistry and they have been practicing in, in the area of Vijayanagar for a long time. Uh, I believe you bought, uh, you were the very few guys who had microscopes in the year 2009 or 10. Uh, can you please uh, say us about the journey towards the microscope, sir? Yes, as you rightly said, there were probably, we could just count on a finger that there were about three or four dentists, uh, endodontists in Bangalore who actually were practicing microdentistry. Dr. Siju was one of them, Dr. Uh, Raghunandan was another, and probably me who were having private clinics. Uh, but the changing point in my career uh, was actually when I visited uh, Edinburgh in 2009. I saw that the horizons were uh, for microdentistry was so great and that's when uh, I immediately decided that I need to buy a microscope and ended up buying the microscope in 2009, in the subsequent year in 2010. Why do you think that there is a need for a microscope in, in your clinic at that time, in 2010? Because uh, at that particular period, even the dental colleges would not uh, have microscopes for postgraduates. True. Uh, the, the, the issue was, when I went there to Edinburgh, uh, when I went there to England, I realized that the rest of the uh, endodontic uh, community had gone far ahead. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of technology, and I realized that in the pursuit of uh, um, perfection, uh, the use of uh, use of microscope was uh, imperative. The Dental Council of India just now has introduced microscopes into their curriculum. What is your take on that? It is just a specialty for uh, postgraduates, or it has to be even for undergraduates, like uh, information. As far as undergraduates are concerned, I think introducing them to microscopy uh, would be a little, uh, will be uh, a lot premature. I would say that it is better to introduce them to uh, magnification, uh, probably with the use of a loop and illumination uh, with uh, LED lighting on the loop, which uh, where the loop is then focused. Uh, because that is what being that is what is being introduced all over the world. In fact, in the University of Pennsylvania and many other universities in Europe, loops with illumination is introduced in the second year when we do preclinical um, uh, when, we, when we do preclinical conservative dentistry. So preclinical endodontics is also introduced, and that has to be done under illumination and magnification. So Dr. Sunil Rao has made a valid point here, uh, viewers. There has to be a change in their curriculum, but uh, to certain extent, it has to be limited at least to practice on loops, which we never did in our uh, BDS life as well. Now the postgraduate cannot just start off with microscope as soon as he enters postgraduation. He needs to have an idea about what is illumination and magnification, which he would have gained enough if he would have practiced it under in during his undergraduate curriculum. Uh, do you think we have a trained faculty, especially in endodontics, who have been exclusively trained under microscope so that they can train? In 2005, we conducted uh, the annual uh, endodontic conference in Bangalore. So I had a chance of the Zeiss, Carl Zeiss company, having their microscope in Bangalore. So they gave the microscope to me and said, please use it, sir, and give us a feedback. I was not trained then, in spite of being an endodontist. So I used the microscope for nearly a week and was and was disgruntled and, and I just rejected microscopy. I sent back the microscope and if, if from what you said, I got introduced into microscopy next only in 2010. So I lost four vital years 
for not having done because I was not trained in microscopy and I was unable to cope up with microscopy, the use of the microscope. When I got exposed to microscope uh, at the ESC in 2009, which meant I was already late by, 10, by 11 years, and now another 20, another 10 years, which is totally of a 21 or 22 years. So if we have not been able to educate our graduates and postgraduates on illumination and magnification, I would actually say it's a shame. So what you are saying in terms of adding it in the curriculum should have been added 20 years back. So we are, I feel, late by, by nearly 20 years. Uh, so I would not, uh, I, I definitely you spoke about the ordinance in 2019, I, it's, it's a welcome move, uh, but it should have been introduced uh, much earlier. So coming back to your question, on uh, whether there's enough uh, trained uh, faculty to train, no, I am. That's that's uh, probably a very very disappointing uh, uh, trend that we are seeing. Not many uh, mentors and uh, teachers are themselves trained. So the the need of the R as far as micro dentistry is concerned is uh, that we have more teachers who have been trained, and I was fortunate enough to be trained under my mentor, Dr. P.D. Joshi, uh, uh, in 2010. That is, I did that course with Dr. Joshi uh, under the Carl Zeiss Academy in 2010, uh, uh, just after coming back from, uh, from UK, after getting inspired from UK. And Dr. Joshi started his clinical practice in microenterontics in 2000. So probably that was the right time that microscopy should have been introduced in India in 2000. So we would have gone leap and bounds in the next 20 years. But we you know how it is. Now, if you see uh, uh, in a holistic approach, uh, our professors as and even the, uh, the faculty associated with uh, endodontics, they are new to the microscopes. So they might be okay with the introduction of microscopes or they expect microscopic endodontics to be a sub-speciality or a super-speciality after uh, MDS? I look at it this way, Dr. Ryan. There is no age to learn something. So it is uh, the, the heads or the professors or people or the faculty which who have not been trained in microscopy can still get trained in India or even go abroad and be trained adequately to in turn train the uh, students. It would be uh, it would be a shame if the professors or the faculty are not able to train because it has already been introduced. So that is, it's now a part of the curriculum. And coming to your point on whether uh, microdentistry should be considered or looked as a super speciality, not really because it's very easy. I mean, I go back to the old saying of ignorance is bliss. What, you, what the eyes don't see, you don't, you don't realize it's really there. Now, that's exactly is what, what's happening in, uh, in uh, microscopy. Now, today, the percentage of the MD2 canals in the, maxilla, in the mandibular first molar is to the extent of 95 to 96 percent. You know, so there used to be, uh, even when we were doing post-graduation about 20, 22 years back, we only looked for three canals, the mesiobuckle, the distobuckle, and the palatal canals. We never bothered about the MB2, but it's been proven that MB2s are present in 95 to 96% of the cases. And this is by, this is uh, uh, on record by Strocco or any other, or maybe even uh, Cliff Ruddle. Uh, who have said that uh, in in in, uh, in journals and on uh, good research, so it is it's a shame that we are not treating we are not doing good endodontics. So let us do the basics right, than thinking about whether we are going to look at microdentistry as a super speciality. Uh, there is scope for microscopy in regular dentistry, not only in for endodontics. It has a lot of advantages. You. You could use it in uh, uh, you could use it in uh, cosmetic dentistry, aesthetic dentistry. Uh, you could use it uh, uh, in implant dentistry for suturing. At the same way, in periodontics for suturing. 
uh, and if you want to raise your bar, if you want to raise your level, then obviously microscopy is the answer for that. So using a microscope is always a, a challenge for any dentist uh, or it is, it is something which is new, which has come across uh, in the field of dentistry. Though you have been practicing microscope for around 10 years, but when it came to you, you have already said that you said it no and then you started. So can you highlight us about your uh, um, challenges or your some difficulties you have come across using microscopes? Any new technology is, uh, is not an easy thing to accept even to the user, uh, even to the person who's giving it and to the end user also. So as I told you, I had challenges, but uh, I was lucky enough to be able to uh, find the right mentor uh, who was who, him, who himself had enough knowledge. At the, the time that when I went to Dr. Joshi, he already had worked on the microscope for nearly eight and a half to nine years. So he was, uh, uh, he was uh, uh, proficient in the use of microscopy and he was so kind enough to show us each and every procedure, live surgical procedure, instrument retrieval procedures. So um, that was for me the, the, two, uh, the second defining moment. The first defining moment was when I went to Edinburgh when I, my, my uh, outlook just, uh, uh, just opened up to what's happening in the outside world and the second one was when I got trained uh, with, uh, with the doctor. So training uh, would be quite, I would, I would rate it as one of the, uh, for one of the first uh, you know, on, the, on the top of the list uh, issues that you have, that you should uh, when you are uh, doing microscopy, uh, as far as challenges are concerned. So for any canal locations or any hurdles or any multiple canals, can loops also guide us uh, uh, for, uh, for a better way? For any like uh, a dentist to have a smaller setup and they can have the dentistry with loops or uh, only say microscopes are really important. No, loops loops do a lot of good. I mean that's what's happening as I told you all over. Undergraduate st um, studies are now being, most of the studies are being done under loops. So it is not necessary that you need to have a microscope or uh, microscope, uh, I would say, uh, when you take your uh, practice and your passion to the next level. But you can do a lot of good dentistry uh, using loops because with the technology that's uh, available as far as loop come illumination is concerned, uh, they gone leap and bounds. So it's not being those uh, different, uh, uh, they're not being just the binocular loop, they're now being the Galilean type, which are much more po powerful you can have loops up till 4.5x and uh, which is uh, which is the first step magnification of a microscope so you don't need to have a microscope all the time you can do a lot of work under the loop regarding the affordability of a microscope now there are a lot of companies available and even the market is open uh, like once the the product is known so there are a lot of companies try to invest and they dilute the market so can you update our uh, viewers regarding the, the present pricing of the microscope which they can use which is a uh, uh, affordable microscope? If I were to advise uh, a, ma a person who wants to use magnification, I would put it this way. Start off with, uh, you know, with, a, with a loop, uh, then graduate to a mid-range microscope. And then a little later, maybe four or five, three or four years down the lane, graduate to a high-end microscope, which gives you a complete package. And uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, loops, excellent quality loops uh, available mm -hmm. in the market. Uh, there are loops uh, by uh, Heine. Uh, there are loops by Carl Zeiss. Uh, Heine could be in the range of uh, sixty to seventy-five thousand. Uh, there are even uh, uh, good surgical microscopes, uh, uh, sorry, surgical uh, um, uh, loops for in the, in the uh, 25 to 45,000 range with illumination. And then when we go to the microscopes, then there are the mid-range microscopes. You could use a, a you could choose a Zoomax uh, from Taiwan, China. 
and then there is uh, uh, Labomed, uh, which is uh, which is from Netherlands. That is uh, one of the fastest moving uh, um, uh, microscopes now here, at least uh, in uh, Indian market. I've also heard from a uh, uh, lot of foreign speakers that they own a on a labomet, so there might be a lot of promise in labomet. And then we go to the next segment, a little higher segment, then we have uh, microscopes like uh, uh, Global, and we have uh, uh, microscopes like uh, Carl Zeiss uh, and Carl Caps, which are probably the middle and uh, the upper higher end, uh, uh, higher end microscopes. So for me, uh, technical specifications and the pricing, a good combination of both would be the right microscope uh, to choose. So this is the brief insight what uh, our mentor Dr. Sunil Rao gave us about the microscopes and he has uh, discussed a lot of points regarding the microscopes. Thank you Dr. Sunil Rao for uh, sparing uh, your uh, precious time for us and uh, sharing your views as well as your case uh, uh, that helps a lot to educate young uh, audience and young undergraduate students. We are here, a platform for, for dental reads and our motive is to uh, learn, relearn and unlearn and again learn. So we hope uh, you become a guiding force for our uh, clinical uh, dental website as well. Okay? Thank you very Thank much you, for giving this talk. Hi, Dental Reach is a knowledge sharing platform or rather I'd call it a knowledge sharing digital platform for faculty, students and clinicians in the field of dentistry. It does the job of mentorship. It helps in reaching a vast audience. Students and other faculties can present the papers or read papers that are posted on the website. So I would recommend this platform as a great opportunity for uh, even students and mentors to present their researches, their ideas and views for the betterment of the dentistry all over the world. Thank you very much. I also wish uh, Dental Reach a vast success for whatever they are doing and having such a wide reach all over the world. Thank you.